discuss your questions in the chat box and they will be answered by the speaker during the talk or at the end. Towards the end, we will take some pictures for our record, so please be prepared. Fill in the registration come feedback form, which will be shared in the chat box. We'll send you the video recording and the certificate to your email provided in the form. Yeah, just, just before yeah. passing the control to the speaker, a brief introduction oh, yeah. to our speaker today. Uh, professor uh, Dr. Mohammed Aminul Islam is currently working as a professor in the School of Business, <laughs> Business Innovation and uh, Technopreneurship at University, Tec uh, University Malaysia Police. He received his bachelor's degree from the International Islamic University Malaysia, MBA and Doctor of Philosophy from University Science Malaysia. He also completed an advanced diploma in teaching in higher education from Nottingham Trent University. As an award-winning academic as well as researcher, Professor Islam received Raffles Education Founders of Award for being the most deserving academic staff of Olympia College Malaysia in 2006, Excellent Academic Support Award in 2009, the Best Lecturer Award in 2010, the Best Supervisor Award in 2018 and 2019 for producing the highest number of PhD graduates, and the Research Excellence Award in 2020 at University of Malaysia Police. He also won the Best PhD Thesis Award 2011 for the Outstanding PhD Dissertation at University of Science Malaysia. He is a member of Asian Academy of Management, Malaysian Institute of Management, and an associate member of Malaysian Finance Association. He is a visiting professor of Northern University, Bangladesh, Daffodil International University, East Delta University, Kamasat University, Thailand, and an academic advisor of Central, Uni uh, Central College, Pena. He has authored and co-authored five books, two book chapters, and about 200 research papers. His writing have so far attracted about 550,000 reads in the research kit and about 4,600 citations in Google Scholar. 20 students completed PhD with his supervision. Uh, supervision. Uh, currently, he is supervising 15 PhD and 15 postdoctoral scholars. His uh, recent research has spanned issues related to entrepreneurship, IPO under pricing, earning management, blockchain, blue economy, Islamic banking, and Sukuk. Now I kindly invite Professor Aminul Islam. Bro? I'll say, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Bissar Rahim. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and very good uh, morning. Very good afternoon, very good evening. Uh, do you have participants from many countries? Uh, I see even in the chat box, we do have participants from China, from Bahrain, from Tanzania, Palestine, Sri Lanka, and of course, uh, Pakistan, India, and uh, nearby Malaysian countries. And uh, I do expect a lot of participants from Nigeria also. All right, so it's, it's going to be a truly uh, international uh, webinar. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, let me uh, take the opportunity to congratulate and thank uh, the Postgraduate Student Society of University Technology Malaysia uh, for organizing this webinar. Uh, I think this is the first kind I'm uh, doing with them. Uh, for Jamila, when she called me, she requested to conduct two webinars. <laughs> I said, okay, let me do one first uh, since my schedule is quite packed. Almost every week I do have webinars. So I told her, okay, I'll give you one first and later we will... <coughs> I think about it. So what we did uh, after consultation with uh, Ponza Mila, uh, actually we combined two topics together. Okay, so research problem and then theoretical framework. Uh, this uh, research has integrated uh, uh, thing, so uh, we will do the connection. So while I start with research problem at the end, I will connect it with uh, uh, the theoretical framework. All right, so that's the idea of doing it. And of course, I have to also uh, thank the University from Sri Lanka, from India, and from Iraq uh, for joining us. All right. Uh, thank you very much again. And uh, uh, let me start. Huh? Let me share the slides. Uh, uh, participants, kindly uh, make sure 
you are muted. Uh, your microphone is muted. Uh, last month, when we, I had a webinar at USN, uh, the two participants were not muted, so we had a lot of trouble. So please uh, keep, an, keep an eye on your uh, icon, whether you are muted or not. And make sure others don't feel disturbed because of uh, you know your mistake. That's number one. Number two, uh, those of you are familiar how to share uh, this uh, live uh, program with uh, Facebook, please do so, so that more participants can be uh, benefited, all right? All right, let me uh, share the screen. And uh, Dr. Shafiq Rahman, can you please stop sharing your content, please? Okay, okay. All right, thank you. Can you see my screen now? Yes, please. All right, yes, thank problem. you. Yes. Okay, let me go to slideshow. Okay. So that's, that's the title for today's uh, webinar, Defining Research Problem and Developing Theoretical Framework. All right, and I have given uh, my information here. I will share the slides with Juan Jamila. Those of you are interested for the slides, you can get it from her. Uh, that's number one. And number two, um, after one week, possibly we will uh, get the video and then I will run it again in my YouTube channel. So once it is in my YouTube channel, then the below the YouTube channel, the slides should be also there for you. So you can even download from there, from my YouTube channel. Those of you are new with me, I do have an uh, YouTube channel. Uh, the name is Platform for Research and Development, where I have uploaded about 70 videos. And these all videos are related to uh, uh, students doing masters by research or PhD. Okay, so it should be beneficial for you. So you can easily uh, access to my YouTube channel and you can watch the videos available there. All right, let me start now. Uh, okay, uh, let me start with Albert Einstein, uh, one of the greatest uh, scientists in our age. Um, he has said that basically the formulation of the research problem is often more essential than the solutions. So formulation of research problem is more important than a solution because the solution is dependent on the identification or definition of the research problem. Uh, I will just give simple example. If you are not feeling well, you are unhealthy, and you go and see the doctor, if doctors fail to diagnose the disease correctly, it doesn't matter how expensive, how efficient medicine is given to you, you won't be cured. So the problem got to be identified well. And same goes to research. If you are undertaking a research, we have to make sure that we have identified and defined research problem correctly, that will determine the procedures later on, the subsequent stages and procedures. And that will determine the kind of solution that we are going to have. All right, uh, it's a quick reminder. <clears throat> research is um, an organized, objective and systematic process. Study a particular problem that needs a solution. So research is undertaken when there is a problem and the problem requires a solution. There are many problems out there. When you are living at home, you are outside home, you are in the office, you are playing games, uh, you are traveling, you are mingling around with friends, you are socializing, networking, whatever. We see there are many problems. Huh? Every moment we uh, do things, uh, we always encounter problems. But not all problems require solutions, okay? so. We have to have problem that requires solution, something that bothers you really, huh? something that bothers you, something troubles you, something creates problem for others, right? So something that requires a warrants solution, that is a problem. And a research got to be undertaken by identifying and defining that problem that requires a solution. But again, the process is very uh, clear, right? As it is in the definition, the process has to be very organized, objective, and systematic, all right? So research 
got to be very organized effort with clear cut objective and the process got to be very significant from A to J from the beginning until the end. Now, this is how research is undertaken. If you look at it, uh, it is start with a research problem where we state uh, the knowledge prior to your research, right? Or our research. So we start with what we have and then we end up with adding what you don't have, okay? So we start with a research problem or research question with the prior knowledge that we have. And at the conclusion, we state uh, what we found from our research and then we raise more questions. There's something very interesting. Huh? Uh, when we do research, uh, we feel like at the end, I provide solutions, everything that is impossible. You might provide some kind of solution and that may not be and that gives you more room to conduct few more researches, okay? Uh, uh, there's a reason we undertake a research in the same area that people have been researching for decades, you know, years uh, uh, of research. And still we do research in the same area because solutions provided are not adequate. Uh, can you please, uh, brother, can you please mute your microphone, please? All right, so these are the components of empirical research. A quick reminding, uh, research is start with the problem and then we will um, have a problem in mind eh? and then we will define it uh, with the support of literature available, with the support of theories, and then we will identify variables on that. And then only we develop theoretical framework and the, uh, the rest of the process continues. So today's talk is starting with the, from the very beginning and then we jump one stage. Eh? <laughs> so we are not doing literature review or systematic literature review talk today. We will learn how to identify and define a problem and from problem we jump into research framework. But again, I'm going to have clear cut link from research problem to research framework without doing systematic literature review. I'll do that. I've organized the slides in that way. This is something that um, I have developed to, to make it uh, understandable by researchers who undertake research. I compare research with a tree. Okay, so it's a tree analogy. And um, a tree, uh, whether it's going to be strong or not, it depends much on the roots of the tree. If the roots are strong and go deeper in the soil, then they, they stand, uh, the tree stand is strong. Even, uh, even if you have a strong wind and it storms, the, 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 still is, the tree will be still there, okay? So, and then uh, the tree, the body, I compare it with theoretical framework, uh, whether the tree would be able to sustain with the storm and other environmental effect it has or not, it depends on how strong the root, you know, that the body is. So one is the root, which is got to be very strong, and then your root and the branches of the tree I compare with underpinning theories. So later, when I'm going to talk about theoretical framework, I'm going to discuss about the theoretical framework together with underpinning theories and theories, all that, so don't worry. And I compare the leaves of the tree with literature review. The beautification of the tree is basically with uh, goes very well with the leaves, right? Uh, same goes to your research when you are doing research. The beautification of research is done by literature review. All right. Um, I'm not going to explain much because this is not the topic for today. Okay. Uh, and then um, the contribution of your research is same as the outcome of the tree. Uh, when you plant a tree, what do you want? Uh, you want flowers or you want the fruits. Okay. So whether the tree is a good one uh, or not, it depending on the kind of flower you get or the kind of fruits you get. Uh, so that's what it is. When you finish our research at the end of it, we have to show something new. We have to show something new, something different, something significant, something relevant, okay, something useful uh, to us. Okay, so that's what we need. Uh, but again, I'm going to have more discussion on it later. And the data quality, I compare it with the quality of the soil and all that, okay? A tree having problem, uh, could be having problem due to uh, the shortage of fertilizers, could be shortage of water, could be poor quality of uh, soil and all that. So the research problem, as you said, that it comes from the roots. 
so your data got to be collected from the roots. So that's how I collected. So data quality and robustness of I got to be connected with the research problem, where the data comes from. All right, so let me uh, continue. This is what um, something I found in the social media and found it very nice. Uh, Sometimes when you go to proposal defense, uh, pre-viva or final viva, that's what you see. Uh, we see the way examiners speak. Um, it looks like uh, they want uh, an apple uh, in, 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 in an orange tree. Uh, they want banana in an apple tree, you know, that's what is impossible, okay? Uh, that's what we do not really want. Uh, new knowledge contribution doesn't mean uh, you have to produce orange in an apple tree or you have to put this mango in a jackfruit tree. It's not like that. <laughs> Basically, what you want is uh, we want you to produce apple in the apple tree, but the possibly your contribution would be if apple size is bigger than it is a contribution. Uh, your tree produces more quantity of apple it is a contribution your tree uh, new tree uh, apple is more tastier it is a contribution so that's what you want to see when you are conducting a research especially phd we'd like to see something different but it doesn't mean that we want oranges in an apple tree. you don't want that okay and that's why you have underpinning theory and supporting theories and with that you will have something new that's what we want huh? So when I'm going to talk about theoretical framework, research framework, and conceptual framework, I'm going to talk uh, more on this later. Okay, let me start with today's topic, problem. Uh, what is a problem then? Um, problem is basically a question raised for inquiry, consideration, or solution. Right? So some kind of question that is raised, okay, for inquiry, uh, for consideration of a, so for solutions. So something that uh, that affects uh, us, something that bothers us, something of concern uh, of industry and society, and uh, that what requires some kind of solution, that's what how we define a problem. Now, uh, what do we do uh, with problem, most of us? What do you do? Uh, certain cases when we see a problem, we just ignore them until and unless it affects me or affects us seriously. Say, for example, you wake up in the morning and you have little uh, uh, leg pain and you can still walk, you can still run, so you just ignore it. Unlike it's become so serious that you cannot really walk properly, then you run to the doctor for a solution, right? So it depends on the severity of the problem. So most of the time when we encounter to a problem, that's what we do. Either we ignore them, we talk about them, or we try to solve them so as a researcher when you see a problem affecting society industry country or the world affecting the humankind then we try to solve it by doing a research okay so as a true researcher we got to be always inquisitive our mind got to be very inquisitive we always have to think uh, why is this happening uh, how, how how can you solve this you know uh, what are the things that is contributing to this? Um, how, how can you find some kind of solution that may help us to solve it? Okay, so that kind of inquisitive mind and thinking uh, has to be developed as a researcher. That's the first prerequisite as a researcher. Mind got to be inquisitive. Anything we see, anything we see beside us, around us, we have to question it. We have to question it. Huh? We have to question it. Uh, you know the history in the US uh, where the, the culture was like everything they used to say, yes, 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 right? And the person who broke that culture was Muhammad Ali, right? When he was asked to go to Vietnam to fight, he said, no, I'm not going to go, right? <laughs> and he broke that culture in the US and that been spread in many other countries. So that's what you want. As a researcher, you cannot simply think everything granted you just you start questioning why you no know, questioning how when where sort of questioning has to be there why because you would like to see some kind of solution to a problem so research problem is something uh, existing that requires solution meaning that something is already there and yet it requires solutions okay say for example i've given an example here complaint of harassment by senior officer. It's very common, right? Or worldwide. 
hair spin is very common. Uh, either female boss or male boss, hair spin is very common. Specific areas in the organization require improvement. Meaning that, say for example, in an organization, you have hair spin and you have policies, but that policies are not enough. That policies are not enough. So you need, you need some kind of policies, okay, so that the problem can be resolved, okay? So while you are having policies there and it's still harassment exists and genuine complaint is still occur. Theoretical conceptual issue needs tightening up. So the, the definition of harassment even not very clear. What constitute harassment? Uh, is a verbal abuse harassment? Uh, is, is, is a funny joke uh, considered as harassment from by male colleague to female or female colleague to male? So there are many kind of definition there and different people have different feeling of what is harassment. So you may do a research to tightening up, uh, to tighten up uh, the definition of harassment itself. Okay. So you are now moving into concept. Or is this question that basic research needs to answer empirically. So now we are going to look at what are the impacts of this harassment. Harassment is there. But does it affect the performance of an organization? Does it affect the productivity? Does it affect the effectiveness? Does it affect the efficiency of an organization? So in many cases, if, if harassment is there, but it doesn't affect the performance of an organization, then researchers may not be willing to do a research because it's not impactful. It's somehow not really affecting significantly. That's the word we use, right? Significant, <laughs> something got to be significant. So this how research problem is defined and looked at, identified. Huh? So you're looking at harassment and you keep questioning, you keep questioning. Is there any policy? Yes, there are policies. It's still happening? Yes, it's still happening. So what are the definition of your harassment? There's so many different uh, employees coming and complaining and different people have different nature of complaint. So by research, you talk to people, you collect data and you define what is actually defined in harassment. And then you are looking at what is more important for social science research as we do. You are looking at whether the harassment is affecting uh, the performance of an organization. Now, uh, so what is a research problem? So we say that a research problem is an issue or concern that investigator presents and justifies in a research study. So you are looking at a concern and issue. Huh? A problem that someone would like to research, anything that a person find unsatisfactory or unsetting, a difficulty of some sort, a state of affairs that need to be changed. So that's how we are defining the research problem. And the problem involves in the areas of concerns to researchers for condition they want to improve, difficulties they want to eliminate, questions for which they want to seek answers. Okay, so when you are undertaking research, uh, when you say uh, most of the time, you know, that's the problem we see with the candidates in the final Bible verse. Even though the candidate has gone through proposal defense, the candidate has gone through uh, P viva, and in the final viva, when examiners ask the student to explain what is your problem, and I, we find many students cannot really uh, provide satisfactory answers of the research problem they undertook, you know, the research problem they identified and defined. To undertake research. Now, um, some more, uh, you know, clear definition of research problem. We say it's a clear, definite, a clear expression about an area of concern, a condition to be improved upon, a difficulty to be eliminated, troubling question that exists in the literature. Existing practice points, uh, you know, uh, solutions to. Uh, Points a solution, uh, no find need, needed a solution. A question that researchers want to answer, or a problem that researchers want to solve. Okay, so it is basically a research problem identification is like identification of destination before undertaking the journey. So without research problem, you cannot proceed. You got to have a problem. Got to be identified. Uh, research got to a problem. Got to be identified before you undertake the research. Okay. It's similar like when you are traveling, you got to have a destination. You cannot simply just come out from the house and drive. You do not know where to go. So if you are thinking of doing a research, so that's how it is. A research problem got to be identified and properly 
defined. Now, um, you may start uh, thinking of something. So it comes from your own conscious, subconscious mind, right? So intuition. So you think of something, uh, something going on, something is wrong. You have a feeling that something is not right. Something is wrong. That comes from your intuition. Like intuition uh, based on the way you have been brought up, the way you have been educated, the way you have been brought up in the family, your networking and socialization of people, your working environment gives you some clue that something is not good, something is not right. So that's where you will start. Intuition, uh, intuition. that's why you start. And then we, what do you do? Uh, with intention, then we experience it. It becomes better. So you understand something is wrong and I experience it is happening now. So what do you do now? After that, we do little research. We do little reading of research papers or books or any other materials where I can uh, try to figure out what is wrong, why it is happening. Is there any answers for these issues and uh, these issues and all that, okay? So you start with intuition from your, your, your own thinking, from your conscious, subconscious mind. And then you experience it a bit and then you do little research and then what you do? You consult with people who has the authority. So the similar example that I have given you, if you are looking at sexual harassment, say for example, uh, Aliyah is just here, harassment. Now it become very specific, sexual harassment. So when you are working and uh, you see uh, that people are talking about it, some people are talking about it. And then while you are working, suddenly you experience it. You have seen some people are doing it. And, uh, or you see your, your friend or colleagues are complaining about it, or you have experienced it. Your boss, uh, different sex, uh, you know, different gender boss, uh, somehow uh, harassed you. So you experience it. So when you see that, then you continue doing little research, reading papers and reading books and all that related to harassment. And you see what is being done and why is this happening? Why people do that? And there are many questions that you have in mind you try to identify. And once you have that conscience, those queries that you get by reading papers and all that, to confirm it, you consult with people with authority. So people from industry, people from academia, that's what you got to consult with. That helps you to identify. You know, we have identified, and then now that helps you to define your research problem properly, okay? Now, why it is so important uh, to, to define research problem? Uh, as you say that a problem will define is half solved, right? Uh, same like understand said, right? Formulation is more important than the solution. So how the problem is framed, determine what solution you are going to obtain, right? Research problem drive subsequent stages of research process. And the proper problem definition ensures research result will meet decision maker's objectives. So once research problem is defined properly, it will show you the later stages, whether your research is going to be a qualitative or quantitative, or whether you are going to take deductive approach or inductive approach, whether you are going to follow, you know, uh, uh, what kind of analysis and all that. Research problem itself, uh, should be able, you know, to provide that kind of guidance if it is clearly identified and defined properly, okay? Now, um, again, why it is so important? Because it establishes the importance of the topic. I'm going to show you some example. How should you write? How should you write the research problem or problem statement? Uh, that's why I'm going to show this to you. It establishes the importance of the topic. It creates reader's interest. Focusing or readers' attention on how the study will add to the literature. So, it when you write research problem, it the way you write it, people think that oh, this topic is very interesting, very important, very relevant, very useful, very related to us. You know, so he feels like reading more. So it creates readers' interest. So when it creates readers' interest and he reads. And he did more after that he has to feel that this research is going to add something to the literature. I'm going to learn something new from this research. That feeling has to be there by reading the research problem of the statement of the problem. Okay. So itself will, will, will tell you that. If if you fail to write that way, you bound to have a lot of problem during the final viva verse. Even starting from proposal defense, you will encounter a lot of issues and problems. If you fail 
to identify and define this as problem correctly. Now, you got to justify a research problem, right? So when I say harassment, then I have to justify. I cannot simply just say that I know some harassments are taking place. I cannot do that, you know, or I have experienced it. By doing that also, I cannot justify. Okay? <laughs> so justification got to be based on what other researchers have found. That's number one. Your justification of research problem. Your identification definition, especially definition, identification could be from your own, but the definition has to be done by using previous researchers materials. That's number one. Number two, justification based on your personal or workplace experiences. So you have your, your, your justification based on previous research. And then after that, your justification based on your own experiences, so workplace in experience. It doesn't have to be your personal. It could be just workplace experiences, getting from colleagues and friends and all that. And then justification based on experiences that others have had in the workplace, right? So the number two and number three, it must be guided by some statistical data. That's very important. Huh? Uh, we see many times in the final Bible we say students, they have a lot of support from literature to define the research problem, but they do not have sufficient support from the industry. So you need to have some kind of statistical data supporting that is happening. Okay, so if you type the harassment as your topic, I will keep similar, you know, same topic for the whole talk. So that is easier for you to understand rather than switching different topics. So if you're talking about doing a harassment, you know it is it is it is prevalent in every society, every country, every industry. Harassment is there. Okay. And when you research literature, you find a lot of evidence, a lot of studies being done. So you now justify with experiences of yourself or you know, in the workplace. And then you have to have data from workplace harassment, so which are available in many syndicated sources where you can collect the data, statistical data. Okay. Now um once you identify and try to define the research problem, then immediately after that, you have to proceed to the next stage. You have to locate the research problem. Okay. Uh, so by opening uh, uh, remarks or uh, opening paragraphs itself, uh, we need to have uh, these this answers of this question. Uh, what is the issue or problem? What controversy uh, leads to the need of a study? That, that creates interest of the people, right? Uh, what concern is being addressed behind the study? Is there a sentence as like the problem being addressed in this study is, you know, dot, dot, dot. That's how will you start at the beginning of writing. So you have to locate the research problem itself from the very beginning. Like every movie that you watch at the beginning, they will show this, you know, they will create the plot for the movie. If you like it, you continue watching it. If you don't like the plot, you will just switch it off. A research problem is like that. It's that important. If you are good in identifying and defining it, then people will feel like it's something of very importance, uh, something very significant. The finding is going to, go to, go to, go to, going to help us a lot. It is going to solve the problem that we see and face. You know, that kind of things got to be there, okay? Uh, I'm sorry, I cannot allow you to annotate because that will disturb the flow. Huh? I'm sorry, I have to decline it. Okay. Now, um, Determining whether a research problem should be researched. Now, remember earlier I said there are many problems out there, but not all problems require research. Not all problems warrant research. Okay, there are certain specific problems there that is affecting society, industry, and all that, and we have to undertake research. So we have to ask ourselves. I put two questions only in the red, and under that I have sub sub questions. Can we or can you study the problem? Uh, I think that's all. Question. What language do? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Can you please unmute? Mute, mute. Okay, I have, okay. Can you hear me now? Can someone respond, please? 
Yes, yes. Yes, we can hear you. You are loud and clear. I can hear you. Because I was muted. Oh, okay. So can we study the problem? Can we study the problem? Do we have access to the research site? Do we have the access? Say, for example, uh, you have evidence of sexual harassment in the manufacturing industry somewhere. Do we have the access to the site? That's the first question. Will you be able to collect the data? Do we have the time, resources, and skills to carry out the research? That's the next question that you got to ask. Yeah? So now you are looking back at yourself, your abilities, your, uh, your resources, your capabilities, your competence. You know, you're looking at that. Uh, many times, students, especially uh, I see in my university, undergraduate students will come and see me because I'm uh, in finance, right? So we don't have finance, research, we specialize degree. So many of them will ask me, I say, Prof, can you supervise me? I say, what do you have to do? He say, I want to do research in finance. I said, how many finance subjects have you taken? <laughs> That's one, the principle of finance. So with that, can you do research in finance? Definitely not, right? So I say, no, you should be rather focusing in marketing and management. You, you, you don't have to do research with me because you like me. Okay, <laughs> that's not the way of looking at it. Rather, you have to look at your skills, your competence, your ability, your capability. All those got to be carefully uh, analyzed before you undertake a topic to do your research. Okay. Now, the next question is, should we study the problem? The problem is there. Should we study? Does it advance the knowledge? That is the most important question that you have to ask yourself. If you are doing PhD, you will be struggling. You'll be sweating to answer this question. Does it advance knowledge? Is there anything new? Okay, is there anything new? <laughs> uh, I remember, I think in some of my webinars, I do mention it. Uh, I was sharing a session, I asked a student. Uh, that's what the last question I asked all the students. Uh, tell me why you should be given the PhD degree. So a student was, one student was answering me like that. He said, Prof, I have studied five years. I spend eight to 10 hours a day, you know? Uh, I, I you know I spend money, I spend time and all that. I say, uh, do you think because of that you should be given a PhD? He said, yes. <laughs> so I asked him back a question. I said, then a taxi driver diving taxi for 20 years and 15 hours a day, should you give him a PhD for taxi diving? And he keep quiet. He doesn't answer me. I say, your answer is like that. Your PhD is given not because you study five, five years and uh, 10 to 12 hours and all that. You have to prove that you are contributing something new to the body of knowledge. That's what is important. Huh? So when you are identifying and defending a research problem, you have to ask yourself, does it advance knowledge? Does it contribute to the practice? That's what the two most important elements that you look at. A PhD is given for either one contribution. Eh? Number one, theoretical contribution, new knowledge contribution. Number two, practical, contextual contribution. And number three, methodological contribution. Okay, in most of our research, methodological contributions are very, very insignificant. So most of the time we try, we try to work with new knowledge contribution and practical contribution, which are much easier compared to methodological contribution. So whether your research problem is identified and defined properly, you have to ask question to yourself. Should I, you know, study this problem? Should, you know, uh, I study this problem? And you have some questions there that will clarify your minds so whether you should undertake this research or not. There's some other questions is still there. For example, like will you study uh, Will your study fill it, uh, a gap or void in the existing literature? Is, is there any gap and you would like to fill up the gap? Or the knowledge is there and you are going to prove that that knowledge is not correct. It's not implementable. It's not useful anymore. Become obsolete already. That can be also uh, uh, done by research. Will your study replicate past study but examine different participants and different research sites? And that's what most of you will argue uh, most of the time. Uh, you, you will argue that uh, research, uh, thousands of research have been uh, undertaken worldwide, but in my country context, in that industry, this research has not been undertaken. This theory has not been tested in that industry or that specific country, you know. Uh, so you look at that. I'm going to show you some example later. Will your study extend the past research or examine the topic more thoroughly? 
So possibly you can conclude that researchers uh, conducted this study and uh, does not provide conclusive conclusive solution to the problem. So that requires a problem and uh, a research. So that is the research gap you're finding out, right? Will your study give voice to the people not heard, silenced, or rejected in society? So this is something uh, not many of us will do, okay? Uh, we have to voice out concerns of people who are not given priority in the society. And that can be also a good area where it can be uh, undertaken, your know, research can be undertaken. So this is how a research flows huh? from very general to specific an example. Say, for example, you are looking at distance learning. That is the topic. Research problem, lack of students in the distance classes, purpose, and then you have research questions. So I have a specific question there from very, you know, beginning, very general up to very specific. So your topic is a very general one. Then you narrow it down a bit, become research problem. Then you translate it into research purpose and research question, very specific, whereby you will have the answers to it. Okay. This is another example, very general to specific. For say, for example, the topic is corruption. corruption. So your research topic is corruption. Yeah. Research so problem you... is corruption in government. Very common in the world. The purpose to study why corruption is evidence in government today. Why? That is your purpose. And research question is, does the use of social media help to expose corruption in government today? So you start with general topic, corruption, research problem, corruption in the government, very specific. And then you go more specific and you go for more specific. So at the end, you are looking at whether you are exposing because government in corruption, how to expose it? That social media help. So your research question is there. So that's how it flows down from a general topic to very specific topic to conduct a research. Now, how to get it started? I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Uh, basically, we'll start with uh, those who, what, where, when, and uh, why questions, okay? So I'm not going to explain much, I'll leave it. As I said that uh, we will share the slide with you, so uh, you may go through uh, later, okay? These are the simple things that you look at. Okay. These are the some criteria that um, you can evaluate whether your research problem is defined properly or not. The first question is whether the problem is researchable. Are there many good topics available? Uh, you know, uh, many times students come to see us and they propose certain topics and after discussion, when you continue asking question and more question and more question, and then we, we tell the student this is not researchable topic, okay? It, it looks to be very lucrative, very attractive, very interesting topic, but yet, it is not accessible, unfortunately. Why? Data is not available. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm having a student doing PhD with me now. Uh, I'm not sure whether he is online with me now. Uh, he's doing a research on FinTech and uh, financial technology, right? The latest one. Uh, and he, he had something in mind. And then after uh, one month of studying, he came back to me and said, Prop, I have to change a bit of my title and topic. Uh, I said, why? He said, uh, we can't get uh, uh, the data that is required, okay? <laughs> So at the beginning, uh, you got to look at, because if you cannot collect the data, the data is not available, then it's not accessible. It's not accessible. Okay, so the first question is whether the problem is accessible. Sorry, excuse me. Whether the problem is important. Remember earlier I said at the beginning, there are many problems, but not all problems are important. Not all problems require solutions. Not all problems warrants uh, research. Okay, so we have to see whether how important it is. Uh, when you have defined uh, the problem, then it should indicate what kind of research you are going to undertake. A good definition of research problem will provide uh, or guide, provide guidance for subsequent stages of research. Problem is specify the population definitely, right? You have to locate your problem. Remember earlier I said you have to locate the problem. So the root of the problem, where the problem is rooted, that got to be identified from the very beginning so that data is collected from there, okay? So you have to collect the data from where, where it is rooted. And problem specifies the variable. Um, and that's the reason uh, I always uh, recommend, uh, suggest my students to write chapter two first, literature review, and then after that proceed to chapter three, uh, literature review, uh, sorry, research methodology. 
then only I ask them to write chapter one, introduction. <laughs> because in introduction, you are writing research problem. So at the beginning, uh, research problem, research question, research objective, significance, all that in chapter one. So if you do not do literature review, how can you uh, define a research problem? So you do chapter two first. So after doing chapter two, you may come back to one. But even personally, I prefer after two, you proceed to three, then one day after that, you write one. Okay. So in the research problem, when you write, it should also specify the variable meaning. Remember that a problem is affected by many issues. Many issues contribute to a research problem. Say, for example, if we take the example of harassment that I have started the example today, why harassment takes place? So there are many issues. Gender issues is there, right? Character morality issues is there. Uh, power authority, the issues are there. So there are many issues there. So those three, four, five issues contribute to the problem. So your research problem in the dependent variable and the issues that we talk about are the independent variables. Okay. And in between, if there are many, you know, the moderating, mediating, which I'm going to talk about today, don't worry. So those variables should be, should be already identified and discussed in the research problem itself. Uh, itself. Be, be very clear on it. Huh? Issues got to be clarified in the research problem. And that's when you go to proposal defense or final viva. I often see many examiners asking students the question of, what are the issues? Tell me the issues. <laughs> very common, right? I'm very sure you have experienced it. Examiners will ask you this question. Tell me the issues. Tell me the issues. What are the issues? <laughs> so if you identify the issues correctly, variables correctly, you can easily answer. These are the issues and that contribute to the problem. Okay, this is problem. And these are the issues. Okay, I'm going to show you a, a plot to, uh, to 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 you know the the where you can put you know a template where you can plot uh, the business problem in the template. Now let us look at sources of research problem in its uh, uh, an academic research. Basically, uh, the sources of problems coming from theory theory or knowledge, right? Um, practical or contextual issues, and the other one is methodological issues. So. Research problem basically comes from these three. Okay. Now, uh, when it comes to knowledge or theoretical gaps, so there are many uh, we can look at. Okay. So these these are the few we can we can look at. Uh, there are theories available, but those theories are uh, are not applicable in the society, so we can nullify them. So there's a gap. A theory is there, but become up, outdated. But people still use it. Nobody knows that it doesn't work anymore. So we have to do a research to prove this theory is outdated. This theory is no more useful. So we nullify a theory. So that is a gap. You got to prove a theory wrong. Okay, modifying a theory. Theory is there, but needs some modification. All right, like uh, coronavirus. Now we have now COVID nineteen. This is coronavirus number three. We had one and two before. So we do have vaccines for that, but now we need to modify those. Right, that's what they have done now, scientists based on the vaccine that we have for corona number two being modified and now we are having the vaccine for coronavirus number three that we have now okay so you are modifying the theory or you can extend the theory okay or even you can um integrate theories you find that one theory is not enough say for example you are talking about harassment theories are there and one theory is not enough different theory explained differently so what do you do? You combine a few theories together, integrate them, and come out with a new framework, integrated framework, and you do a research. Okay, so your research framework is being proposed by using few theories. So theories are integrated. Okay, theories are integrated. Or you may validate a theory. Validating theory is you are testing data with the statistical, sorry, you are testing theory with the statistical data. That's what you call validating. You validate with statistical data, whether the truth, exist or not right or even you can test the effectiveness of a theory if you do that this all are contribution all these all are the gaps can be identified and later on your contribution comes from here so you're contributing new knowledge and you are getting your phd degree okay or even you can verify a theory right okay uh, methodological issues are, are, are there could be many few i have uh, uh, put it in the slide uh, proposing new methodology uh, say most of the past research they use qualitative study but you want to do quantitative but most of them use quantitative you want to do qualitative but most of the studies either qualitative quantitative then you want to do mixed approach quantitative with 
qualitative or triangulation okay new methodology can be used so that is a contribution testing a, a, a proposed methodology in new context a methodology has been tested somewhere but you want to test in your place right uh, integration or triangulation i've explained you develop new instrument uh, instrument could be uh, for the uh, for the interview or it could be for survey right or a validating okay. instrument okay. being developed uh, into a new context all right that could be also a new contribution so there could be always gap you know these are the five areas that i have shown there could be many areas where you can easily identify the gap the issues Hello? affecting the problem that you have identified and that helps you to define it properly and the last one basically we look at industrial and contextual issues so when you see something new arise with covid 19 there's so many new industrial issues already there and trust me uh, when you come back to the next normal huh? we had uh, old normal a new normal and now we talk about next normal <laughs> We do not know we are still in new normal we do not know how the new norm the next normal going to be we do not know yet so we know the new normal how it is we are being locked down we are inside the home for months after months and uh, we have to follow certain sops given by the government and all that we have to do it to save ourselves and the country but what is important once it is going to be managed you are going to have next normal how next normal going to be nobody knows because the economy of the whole world is going to be collapsed. Uh, with that collapsed economy to reviving the economy and uh, coming back to you know, the normal would be very challenging. We do not know yet. So that will give you a lot of room to do research. Okay. So new issues would be there a lot and we have to focus on it. And together with fourth industrial uh, revolution, a lot of technological advancement, all that creating havoc in our life, changing everything, the way we do things, the way we uh, lead our life the way you mingle around the people the way you socialize the way you network with people everything is changing because of fourth industrial revolution with the advancements of new technology and all that okay most of the purchases that we do now uh, online right <laughs> last one year uh, I, I i remember i think most of the things that i bought almost 80 percent thing that i bought was from online and i found the online things are cheaper and better quality than i buy from the shops even Okay, so the life has been changed. So I'm not withdrawing money from the bank. I'm just paying online transfer, right? <laughs> Using my credit card. So it, it has changed. You know, there are many, these are the simple examples that you look at. I don't go to the clinic to get my uh, medicine. Huh? I, I don't go. Uh, last six months. I just call the clinic and uh, the clinic will send the medicine to my house. I don't go. Huh? I, possibly I'm one of the fortunate person in my town. The clinic will send the medic medicine to my house. I don't go. Uh, even uh, the doctor said, if you come to the clinic, you don't have to come inside the clinic. You stay in the car. I will go and see you there. So that's happening in, 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 in everywhere. That's happening, right? Drive through clinic. And uh, now it's possible, right? <laughs> we had dive through uh, uh, KFC and McDonald's. We have seen that before. We have been so used to now. We have dived through COVID testing. We have dived through clinic and dive through hospitals. It's going to be there. And we will have doctors on call. Doctors will be coming at home rather than we go to the doctor. So those things are new issues, you know, will give you room, uh, a lot of room. Changing mindsets, uh, problem reoccur and all that also, uh, sorry, uh, there. So these are the few that I have put it there, but there could be many industrial issues are there. I have talked about it few before. Uh, for example, like policies are there, but not enough. Policies are there, but not effective. Policies are there, but not adequate. And uh, no all sort of thing that you look at and, and we see policies in different industry whether can you apply in another industry so those gives you areas the gaps for you to continue uh, doing research now how do we identify and uh, define research problem there are many different ways of looking at it you can consult with experts your personal experiences your practical experiences critical review of literature uh, you look at the folklore you know the way um, uh, things are done uh, the way people live uh, the cultures and and all that in the, in the society, right? The folklore uh, gives you a lot of room to identify uh, problems. Uh, through brainstorming, of course, uh, that's what you do, right? Um, uh, if you have a good supervisor, uh, that's, that's what every time will be done, brainstorming. I read papers, you come and sit down with the supervisor and you have debate, you talk and you debate and you argue and you have to sustain with the argument. That's what is important. 
So it is your research, not your supervisor research. Uh, please do not expect your supervisor to tell you, uh, okay, this is what you are going to do. No, it should be you to tell your supervisor, this is what I'm going to do. Why? Because I read this and I found this and all that, you know. So you have all that mind, reading previous research and then you would doing brainstorming together with the supervisor and finalizing your topic, all right? That's how it should be, that's how it should be. Then your life would be smooth. Uh, and your defense during the proposal defense of final viva would be easier if it works that way. Huh? Unfortunately, there are students who expect the supervisors to spoon feed them, which is not right. PhD is an independent research. Please remember that. It is an independent research. It is your work. You have to do it. Supervisor will just provide guidance. That's it. Uh, those days are gone. Supervisor will download a paper and give it to you and ask you to read and come back to me. No. You would be reading paper and coming and updating the supervisor. Okay, <laughs> you'd be updating the supervisor, telling I read a new paper, you know, Prof, I read a new paper and this is what is it. And so, oh yeah, I didn't read that paper or oh, something very interesting. Okay, share me the paper. That's how it should be. You no, know? you should be updated than the supervisors. You should be updating the supervisors. Then your life would be smooth uh, 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 during the journey. Existing theories and uh, social issues and uh, exposed to physics. There could be many. Yeah. There could be many other different uh, uh, ways of looking at it. I have put quite quite good number of here, which you can uh, take into you know, account and think of it to identify and define a research problem. As I said, uh, once you you are staying inside the house, no. still you have many problems, and once you just cross no. the door of your house, you have many other problems. So all problems are that you got to be inquisitive and look at whether that problem affecting us or affecting the society, affecting an industry, affecting the country. And that requires some kind of solution that warrants some kind of solution. Then we undertake that problem to conduct a research. Now, uh, how do I identify? We search for a problem, right? We search for a problem. We need more and then take notes, keep consulting with journals, seek professional advice, Keep the topic interesting. Uh, so these are the some uh, things uh, which I don't think I have to uh, discuss more. Huh? Now, um, problem identification and definition, what to do? Uh, I say what to do. Uh, basically, you follow a general procedure. Uh, what is the procedure? You identify the research situ problem situation, study the available research, write a statement identifying, defining the problem, consult with colleagues, academics or industry experts and incorporate their inputs into your research. This is a very simple procedure or guideline given to you. Uh, could be very useful. Once you identify a problem situation, then we start looking at reviewing papers, right? That's what we do. We, we download papers, we, we look for papers, we review them, we understand them. And from there, we identify the research gap, then we start writing. We start writing, right? We start writing. So while you do the first draft, uh, do not leave it there, uh, keep it with yourself. Consult, consult with people, consult with people. Consult with colleagues, with friends, uh, academic um, uh, supervisors, uh, or any other academics. It doesn't have to be your supervisor alone. There could be many other academics could be better than your supervisor. Talk to people. Go to industry. Talk to the managers who are handling and dealing with this problem. Get some input from them. All right? And that helps you to really define research problem correctly. Remember, a research problem should be defined with two elements. One is academic gap research gap, literature gap. The other one is the supporting data or evidence from the industry, which two has to come together. Then only your research problem will be identified and divided properly. Yeah? Please remember that. Now, this is something, uh, uh, the steps that I put it. Uh, so you outline the, your interest, then you choose a topic, uh, you narrow down your topic, you identify the research problem, you identify your purpose of the study, and then, sorry, uh, uh, you, you, you have your research question afterwards. Now, uh, while you do this, uh, follow these stages, you have to keep certain uh, things in mind. I put it on the left and right. Uh, read, your, read about your interests, talk to your colleagues, find out what others are doing, you know. Um, then observe, um, you know, observe your environment. Uh, be curious, ask questions. So these six elements are there which helps you to follow the stages of research problem, okay? Identifying and defining research problem. This is another one process of uh, defining research problem given by, uh, I'm taken from a book, so I, I can't remember at this moment, I'm sorry. 
understand the business situation uh, with key symptoms okay identify uh, or isolate the problem from the symptoms so this is very important huh? when you are not feeling well you are unhealthy that is the problem you feel pain you feel you are under something not good with you right so what are the symptoms if you are having runny nose you are having cough you are having fever you are having body ache you are having diarrhea there are many so many things happen with you can happen with your body so that makes you unwell so those are the issues those are the issues what is the problem you are not healthy you are not healthy so we have to separate isolate problem from the issues that's very important huh? right if the problem is uh, 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 harassment then what contributes to the harassment uh, well whether the harassment contributing to the performance and organization that's what i have explained earlier then we write a statement and then we look at uh, in need of analysis in need of analysis is the you need that is analyzed that data, where does the data come from? That is the need of analysis. If the problem affecting employees, so the need of analysis employees. If the problem is affecting the organization, you need of analysis is organization and so on. Huh? And you determine the relevant variables. Remember I said earlier, the research problem itself it should be able to identify variables already. Okay, and then you state your research question and objectives. When you have independent, dependent variable identified, research questions are very easy. First research question, one independent variable to another is the dependent variable. Second research question, second independent variable to dependent variable. Then it continues. Okay. Or you put all independent variable into dependent variable as one question. And then independent variable to the dependent variable in between you have moderating or mediating. So you have all those variables are there and easily you can write the research questions or research objectives. Well, I do see some questions uh, in the comments uh, but don't worry uh, we will have question and answer session we'll take some questions and as i said earlier the slides should be shared with you so don't worry you don't have to write so many times okay all right now while you are doing research ask yourself ask yourself some question to help identify your business problem for your people okay so uh, i'm not sure why is it going suddenly uh uh, kindly, can you please uh, mute your you microphone? Please, uh, your microphone, please, 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 what was the issue or problem you want to study? What is the concern being addressed behind this study? Why do you want to undertake this study? Why is this study important to scholarly community? So these are the few questions that will be very helpful. Uh, if you have answers to these four questions, good answers to these four questions, you will have identified and defined your research problem correctly. Now, these are some guidelines that I'm going to give you um, to identify a research topic or to define a research problem. Number one, the research problem must be chosen by the researcher. It doesn't have to be chosen by supervisor. No, you should be. You should be. The researcher should be choosing his own topic. Okay, research problem. Research problem must be within the interest of the research. You must have interest in the area. Otherwise, you'll be suffering. Research is not something very simple thing to do. It requires a lot of efforts, a lot of hard work, a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of, lot of, lot of, a uh, lot of things. <laughs> so you have to be, it has to be something very interesting so that you feel like you are doing something very well and you have to take it like very interesting things that you are going to do. Like if you are going to travel somewhere, you will feel the excitement if you know that place is going to be an exciting place, something interesting place. And if you know you are traveling because uh, there's something, something boring thing that you are going to do, definitely it's not going to be something enjoying, uh, something exciting. So research area got to be something of your interest. You have to be very careful when you identify that. Problem must be within the specialization of the researcher. So now you got to look at yourself, the kind of specialization you have. If I have done my master's and uh, honors in marketing, and then I want to do PhD in finance, that's impossible. <laughs> okay. Excuse me. 
Okay. Or uh, if I have done my master's and honors in accounting and finance, and then I want to do research in IT, it's impossible. <laughs> okay. So that's what is very important. Your specialization got to be taken care of. The topic, the topic, the topic should be something, something related to your specialization. The researcher must be able, the research problem must be manageable, feasible, and researchable. I think it's very clear. I don't spend time because I still got many slides to go on. Huh? The researcher must have capability and ability to finance. Huh? Finance. Uh, research involves uh, money, huh? a lot of money, actually. If you are doing PhD in different universities, you've got to pay tuition fee for so many years. Uh, if you are doing own research uh, to come out with the paper, even still, it involves money, collecting data and many other things where it involves money. Um, research, uh, the research problem must be completed within the period determined. Remember, if you are doing PhD, the minimum is two years, maximum is about five years. It can be extended to one, two years, depending on the institutions where uh, you are in. Okay. So if you choose a very broad area, comprehensive area, and it is not manageable within the time frame, two years or three years or four years, five years, then you are in trouble. So you've got to be very careful on selecting the topic. Make sure the topic is such narrowed down so that you can finish within the stipulated time given to you. The research problem must be within the competence, huh? it's understood. The research problem must be significant, relevant, and important. And I put in the red mark, to the present time, as well as to the future, as well to the future, right? The research topic that you're doing now, remember when you're undertaking research, it takes three to four years to finish. Make sure when you finish, it's still it is relevant. It's still something new. It is still something updated. Okay. Otherwise, when you go to proposal defense and uh, sorry, final viva bose, and then you'll be struggling to show that your findings is current, is current, something updated, something new, something new. It's very important. Huh? So most of the time, what we do, we focus on present, and we tend to forget that my study would be completed <laughs> only after three years or four years. So we have to be a bit futuristic. You know, we have to read uh, somehow the picture. After four years or five years, is my study is still going to be relevant? Is my study is still going to be new? Is my study going to be contributing to the new knowledge or something uh, practical uh, uh, in a context and all that? Got to be very careful. And the last one is very important. The result of this study must be practical and implementable. That's what is very important huh? because most of the time, uh, when you go to the industry, many industry people complain about PhD. They say PhD is just an academic degree, it doesn't help us, you know, not, nothing relevant to us. It's true, you know, many PhD studies are like that. It's so academic, the industry, they do not get any benefit at all. But why do you do the research then? You just want to publish a paper and you want people to read and cite your paper, that's it? No, that shouldn't be the way of looking into research. You should be doing research to contribute to the society. The contribution should be multifolded. Of course, you publish a paper, you want citation, of course. At the same time, when people read your paper and they cite you, they should be benefiting from the findings of your research. Okay, they should be benefiting. So that's very important. So when you have findings at the end of your thesis, when you have recommendations and conclusions, people can take things, you know, we, we say take home away, uh, uh, take home away uh, 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 things from your thesis so that they can go back, they can practice it, they can implement it, and they can be benefited from that. Uh, this one, I don't think I'm going to discuss a lot, okay? So this is unit of analysis. I said, this is basically the unit that you are going to analyze. This is basically where the data is coming from, okay? Okay, this is an example of how it works. It's a very good one, huh? Some of you, I think, uh, put question there, what is the research gap and what is literature gap and <laughs> all that. So please wait before you ask question because I have many slides to clarify many things with you, okay? So look at the example. And the topic, say, for example, I've given a new topic here, ethical issues in colleges, research problem, ethical violations, meaning that you have ethics, you have ethics, you have policies, you have procedures, but it is violated, it is violated. So what is the gap? Justification of research problem. Gap in the literature. Why they are violating? There's no answer in the, in the, in the theory. So there is a gap there. 
so people have done research on it but there's no concrete conclusion on the topic so there's a gap in the literature and then you are getting reports from the industry there are reports of violations so you have literature gap and you have data from industry supporting the research gap that you found from the academic reading these two comes together it becomes research gap okay okay i'm answering the question i'm answering the question, I'm answering the I'm question, answering the question. Okay. so put in so, the uh, uh, chat box uh, so your literature gap is part of the research gap your literature gap combined with the data evidence from the industry that makes it a research gap okay that makes it a research gap so ethical issues in the college was the topic research problem there is a violation of ethical ethics and then justification of the research problem gap in the literature there is no clear cut knowledge theories that explain it and you have data from the industry and then deficiencies of the evidence you say uh, identifying and characterizing violation so uh, there is no clear identification and character kind of violations taking place you see and then you are relating the, to the audience assessing the violation you are helping recruitment right recruiters develop better ethical standards help athletes understand ethical issues so these are going towards the end you are identifying audience and you are collecting data you are making conclusion and recommendations that's how it goes on huh? i will have more 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 examples don't worry say for example this is another example i give it in a different way say for example you are talking to a storekeeper and the store cooper says uh, we have seen the decline in the patronage of our store not many visitors are coming so the researcher says how do you know that uh, the storekeeper says well it is reflected in our sales and market share okay so the researcher then asks another question okay why do you think your patronage has declined and the shopkeeper said i wish i knew <laughs> meaning the shopkeeper know his sales are declining but he doesn't know why okay so the research is asking the question what about competition so the shopkeeper answer i suspect we are better than competitors on some factors and worse on some others okay so the research is say how do the customer view a store the shopkeeper said i think most of them positively most of them positively although we may have a weak area in a weak area or two so you can see here, here uh, as i said at the beginning that researcher you got to be inquisitive and you start asking question so you are going to your shopkeeper and you are asking him how is your business he say was well, okay but i see there's a decline in sales uh, there is declining in number of visitors and then you keep asking and you keep asking and you keep asking at the end you you know reached your conclusion that there is a problem there is a problem and then the question is what should be done to improve the patronage of the store so now there is a problem or declining of sales and you have to do a study to come out with some kind of recommendations to come out with that kind of situation and he come back to the positive trend rather than declining he is having increasing of number of visitors or patronage right so there are many different way of looking at it so there are some uh, i have uh, mentioned it here but most important to me you know there are some uh, some areas where a student have the areas potential areas of research that they do not know how to identify <coughs> excuse me um say for example there was a case one student was doing a study on companies that are doing very well IT top 100 IT companies in, uh, uh, in in the world, and then when she comes to the proposal defense, the examiners asked her, uh, "What is the problem?" And she struggles. She says, "I cannot really find any problem uh, because uh, th this organization performance that was a dependent variable." Uh, so she feels that uh, these companies are doing well. So I want to do a study. And so why you want to do a study? If the companies are doing well, is there any need to do a study? And, and uh, she fails to you know show any problem so but she has written about 100 pages and uh, she got two very capable supervisors so it comes back you know so the supervisor is okay after the session let me 
a proper means. So they came to see me and said, okay, let's sit down and talk. So I asked the student, uh, why you want to do the study? He said, prof, actually, I want to measure uh, these companies where they are so successful, become top 10. I think, uh, I'm, I said, are you going to look at uh, the success, critical success factors of the company? He said, not really. Then I start asking questions. Eh? I start asking her questions. I said, okay, those companies are top 100 this year. Were they all in top 100 last year? Then she said, no. I said, all right. I said, those companies in top 100 10 years before, how many of them are now in top 100? You say about 10? <laughs> so I started more questions and more questions. And finally, excuse me, there's an insect disturbing me. <clears throat> finally, I proved to her that there is a problem of sustainability of the organizations. They have been in the top 20 or top 50 or top 100, but then they cannot maintain it. So that's the research problem. Those at the top 100 10 years before, only 10 of them now. Those top 100 five years before, only 20 of them now. And those are top 100 now, after three years, there are no more uh, 50 of them there, okay? So that's how you should be critically looking into research problem, okay? So your mind got to be inquisitive. You got to keep asking questions. You got to keep asking questions. And then only you will reach to a situation whereby you will identify and define research problem correctly. Okay, now how do we write a research problem? Okay, now writing a statement of the problem. Uh, the research problem within the study, right? Uh, you will start with the research problem within the study, justification of the problem based on previous research, shortcoming of the previous research, uh, previous research, and the importance of significance of the problem, how it is affecting. That should be there in the statement of the problem. That makes it up like a good problem statement, okay? I'm going to show you more example, don't worry. This is a practical example, how you should be writing a research problem, okay? This is student, this is student, basically uh, look at, you can still hear me, right? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. yes sir, we can hear okay. All right, thank, thank, thank you, because thank I saw you. a comment, no, no voice. Yes, sir, we hear properly. No issue. Right. Thank you, thank you. Okay, this is student of mine, completed PhD, and this is, uh, these are the points that I have taken from his research problem write-up. Huh? So he has identified these are the gaps. Dearth of research in emerging countries. He was from Nigeria. He said research has not been done in emerging economies. That's number one. Number two, contemporary study gave conflicting and inconclusive results. Hence, reaching a valid conclusion remains an elusive goal. So findings are not conclusive, inconclusive and conflicting to some time. Limited studies on performance measures, farm value versus profitability. The link between financial risks, business risks, and farm value is only subject of few studies, only few. Prior studies suffer significant methodological limitations in, in applicability or irrelevance of findings in developing economies or in emerging economies. Inconsistency in the findings of prior studies. Empirical support for financial innovation, there's something he is introducing new totally. So he is combining all these into one study. So you can see it now. If you can put all these issues together in a research problem, I'm very sure you can see it now how beautifully research problem can be written. Okay. So you're highlighting the research gap and the gap from the industry with the evidence from the industry. And then you combine it together, that becomes research gap, and then you highlight it in the research problem. That's how it should be written. Okay. Now, I have given some example of how a statement of problem should be written. Uh, this is, I'm not going to write. I'm not going to read, I'm sorry. Uh, when I share the slide, uh, uh, please look into uh, and, and, and make your mind how you should be proceeding to write your uh, problem statement. Huh? Now, this is uh, from Visa 2008. Uh, he has recommended that when you identify this as problem or define this as problem, look at from three aspects. One is content theme, uh, number two is knowledge type, and number three by analysis level, okay? Uh, sorry, I think my uh, presentation has got problem, right? Uh, okay. Oh, somebody sharing, uh, Farah. Sorry, Farah, uh, can you stop sharing, please? 
para Um, can you see, see my slide? Yes, right. yes Professor. All, yes. all right, thank yes. you, thank yes. you. Uh, once I present, others cannot really present. If you present, then I'll be out. <laughs> uh, okay, so Visa is advising that when we uh, write this is problem, or define, we should go with content, knowledge type, and analysis level. So that's most of the time we'll tell, right, the students, uh, knowledge type, theoretical, empirical, it should be there, and it should be having uh, some kind of, it's, you know, uh, analysis from the global perspective to regional, uh, finally coming back to your own country. Okay. <clears throat> this is an example given, which I'm not going to go through. Uh, following, this is uh, basically following a uh, visa's way. Eh? So by content theme, by uh, uh, empirical, and then you are looking at empirical again, the knowledge level, following by empirical again, you know, and then following by knowledge type, and then you have methodological, and finally you have theoretical. So that's how the example is there, which I'm going to leave it for you, okay? So for your own way of looking at it. This is something that I have come out and proposed uh, to the world. Huh? Many people have uh, appreciated. Uh, this is a template that I'm proposing. Uh, you can actually plot uh, issues into a template to show, highlight the research problem that you have identified. Say, for example, this student is doing a study, I put the title at the top, right? Uh, effects of human resource management factors on organization performance of garments industry workplace safety as a moderator. So his main problem is organization performance. That's a dependent variable. And his first issue is recruitment selection, second issue, training development, third issue, performance appraisal, and it goes on reward and uh, benefits to the fourth issues so instead sub problem two workplace safety is a moderator so i put it there now you can see here issue one issue two issue three issue four these all are independent variable and main problem organization performance is the dependent variable so while i'm concluding on definition of research problem i'm straight taking it to the framework that's what i'm how i'm connecting to this talk okay and then this student has some other industrial issues Dissatisfaction among the uh, labor or employees, labor is strife, vandalism, employee turnover, those he has. So he has earlier academic issues here, and then later he has industrial issues together. So that makes it a strong research problem. This is another one, right? My, my PhD student, uh, financial risk, business risk, and finance uh, firm value, moderating uh, role of financial innovation. So the main problem is firm value. Firm value is declining, not consistent in Nigeria. So what are the issues he identified? He has the credit risk, liquidity risk, operation risk, and so on. These all are each independent variables. And I put sub-problem to financial innovation, moderating variable. Okay, and then he does have practical issues, high non-performing loans, weak liquidity, high level of fraud, and all so on. So he has uh, academic issues. You know, he has academic issues here. And then he continues with evidence from the industry. That makes it a research gap and that's what i said you have literature gap and you have industrial gap coming together makes it a research gap a research problem with issues all right all right so i continue with the next one i'm moving into the framework huh? so that's uh, what uh, uh, charles uh, catering said he said high achievement always takes place in the framework of high risk expectation so when you develop your research framework make, make sure you have something uh, of uh, with high expectation, you want to contribute something. You have to contribute something, new knowledge or new practices and all that. Now, before I move to theoretical framework, uh, quickly I go through this. Categories of research are basically qualitative and quantitative, but again, you may have um, the mix uh, method also, right? Uh, so research basically start with qualitative and then we validate it quantitative and that continues, okay? That continues. Quantitative research basically we just uh, later, I will show you in the research philosophy. We try to prove what has been proposed by qualitative study. We test what is being proposed. Huh? Qualitative study ends up with assumption and theory. And quantitative study will test hypothesis and prove that theory, validate the theory, validate, the, ver verify that theory, nullify that theory. Those all be done by basically qualitative studies. And then we may do uh, triangulation and all that. Now, this is something very important uh, in Asia. I think most students they miss this. 
research paradigm or research philosophy. Yeah? When you do a PhD, it's basically doctor of philosophy. It's not, uh, it's, it's, it's not doctor of finance or doctor of marketing. Uh, it's basically uh, doctor of philosophy. So philosophical uh, underpinning must be there. So once you do theoretical framework, you will have theoretical underpinning. But unfortunately, in most of the cases, we do not see the philosophical underpinning of a research. So that's what I would like to show a bit to you, okay? There are two terms that you got to understand. One is ontology, other one is epistemology. Ontology is basically finding out the truth. You know, there is a problem. Now we want to prove whether this is true. It is happening. This is really happening. There's so many policies there. Still, it is happening. For example, like harassment, the example I studied from the beginning. There's so many rules and regulations. Almost every country, and it's still harassment taking place. So, is it really true? How far it is true? So, that is ontology. Finding out the real, what is real, what is the truth. It could be more than, it could be one truth, that there could be more than one truth. If one truth, we call it realist. If more than one truth, we call it relativist ontology, okay? And epistemology is knowing exactly what is happening, the truth, the reality of something, okay? The reality of a problem, knowing that is called epistemology, start with the knowledge, okay? Epistemology. So that's how a research flows. We start with uh, ontology and uh, you know what is reality and then uh, what and how can i find the reality there's knowledge epistemology then theoretical perspective what approach to be taken methodology what procedures to be taken and so on okay now um when you undertake research our research will fall either one of these categories there are four there are four categories uh, either we fall into positivism whereby uh, we conduct deductive approach and quantitative study find out only one truth we accept or reject hypothesis. Post-positivism, we find out more than one truth using quantitative study, deductive approach, or we more we go more into deeper and deeper into a problem <clears throat> and we interpret it, that is interpretivism, by using qualitative study, or we go for constructivism, we construct hypothesis, construct a theory, double up a theory, also using qualitative study and inductive approach. I'm going to explain inductive and deductive approach later. So positivism and post-positivism, these two, basically, if we go through this philosophy, we will use deductive approach, we'll go for quantitative study. If you are going for interpretivism or constructivism, then we will follow qualitative and inductive approach, okay? So these are the <coughs> approaches we have. The first one, we call it deductive approach. <coughs> The deductive approach starts with theory. Then from the theory, we construct hypothesis. We collect data and finally accept or reject hypothesis. Okay, that's what it is. It's a deductive. We deduct from what we have. So we start with the theory and we end up with accepting or rejecting hypothesis. Okay, so we start from where the qualitative study ended. So this is definitely a quantitative study. We are following positivism or post-positivism, which we have to remember. Okay. <clears throat> So this is an, uh, an analogy I give always to understand it better. Deductive approach, I see basically you are landing in a... Can you please unmute your microphone, brother? Sorry. Muhammad Shuhel Mia, can you please, can you please unmute your microphone? Shohel Mia, can you please unmute your microphone, please? So, Hail, can you please mute your phone? Mute your mic, please. Shohel, can you please mute your microphone? Hello, Shohel, can you please mute your microphone? Uh, if he's not listening, just uh, push him out of the group. That's fine. Uh, please, if not Jamila, listening, can you remove him? Push him out of the group. Can you please remove him? Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I distressed the flow of my thinking even. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was with the deductive approach, so I'm saying that uh, you are landing in a beautiful garden. And then what do you do? You pick up the flower that you like. You won't take all the flowers. You won't like all the flowers. You pick up only those you like. So that is deductive approach. So you have a theory. You have many theories. You choose appropriate theories. And then from those theories, you pick up the variables. You choose the variables. You know, 
you choose the variable so that is deductive approach like you are in a garden the many flowers you choose only those you like those are relevant useful to you related to you that is called deductive approach okay only two slide i explain um, one hour lecture okay <laughs> that's basically one hour lecture only two slide this is inductive also one hour lecture i'm going to show you two slide very easy way of explaining you observe the phenomena you analyze the pattern you formulate relationship we come up with assumptions not always theory inductive research is supposed to end up with a theory but if you come out with a theory you will get a nobel prize <laughs> not that easy but we will end up at least with some assumptions okay and those assumptions will be tested by quantitative study by deductive approach so that's the assumption i take <coughs> analogy i give you are landing on this soil ground then you are preparing this uh, the land for uh, planting a tree you plant a tree you fertilize it you water it and finally you get the kind of flowers you wanted <laughs> okay so these are all the flowers that you like because these are the tree that you have planted so this is inductive research you start with zero and we end up with something totally new okay something that i expected so if you are looking at harassment and issue and you want to undertake that research if you follow deductive approach you follow what are the theories available you work with that but if you follow inductive approach you start from zero you have some kind of understanding perception of it and then you follow uh, collecting data and finally you uh, uh, conclude you know with uh, some kind of assumptions <clears throat> so deductive is whereby you have everything there from there you choose and then finally you make a conclusion so that is real relativism or post positivism or post positivism you finding out the truth what is the reality okay but inductive approach is you are interpreting wisdom or constructivism you are interpreting you are interpreting more and more going deeper or you're constructing something new okay so that's how it is so i leave it here because this is not my topic <laughs> so okay this is the jargon before i move to theoretical framework uh, basically uh, what is the time now 5 44 okay can i take another half an hour upon jamila okay. yeah. and we have a lot of questions as well after you finish we can come back uh, to that so I, I i take half an hour i i speed up a bit uh, these topics are so important so i have to take time to explain uh, because okay uh, so in in research these are the jargon that we always use the data information knowledge and technology data are the raw facts and figure and when we scan the data and make it useful it become information data is available but not all data are useful to me relevant to me not relevant to my research not related to my research so we scan it and get the right kind of in data that data we call it information something useful become information and when i have the position of that information it become knowledge when you say this 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 person is knowledgeable meaning what he has the position of some information that i don't have okay and when i have the ability to apply the knowledge it becomes technology please keep that in mind to clarify i i do as many times students uh, to define what is data they cannot really answer <laughs> what is information cannot define how do you define knowledge cannot define so the, so that problems are there okay excuse me <coughs> okay what is theory theory is a greek term basically it's a proposition to be proved uh, some propositions and all that got to be proved huh? uh Zamila, can you please share the link uh, for participants to fill in yeah, yeah. We'll share it. thank you so a theory is a set of related statement that describe or uh, you know explain phenomena in a systematic way and many other definitions are there. Basically, a theory will show relationship between two or three or more variables. That's a theory, okay? So that's how we start. Huh? When, when, when we talk about theory, we start with ideas. And then from idea, we convert into concepts. Concept is something visible, you know, something... Uh, uh, ideas are something uh, uh, may not be, uh, uh, you know, understandable, may not be measurable. Uh, it's not something visible. So ideas, from idea, when you convert something that is at least, you know, visible, people can understand that, that it's something concept. And when that concept is measurable, we call it construct. 
Okay, so cost tracks are similar to like variables. Okay, and then <laughs> when we assume relationship between cost tracks, it becomes propositions. And when propositions are proved, it becomes theory. So these are the building blocks of a theory. Building blocks of a theory. So you start with the ideas, the concept, then construct proposition theory. So oh. those of you who are with me will do quantitative study, you will do theoretical framework, you will develop theoretical framework. But if you are doing qualitative study, you will develop conceptual framework. So after ideas, concept, that's where you stop, qualitative study. And then you propose proposition, you end up your study. Okay? You start with concept, you end up with proposition. <coughs> Excuse me. But in a quantitative study, you start with the theory and you end up with ideas. You give new ideas. You give new ideas, okay? Um, I think you just um, uh, give me one uh, one minute. Uh, where do I go? <coughs> just just give me uh, one minute. Uh, it's, it's... Okay. <clears throat> While I was talking, um, something ran into my throat. I don't know what is that. Mosquito or something, uh, I do not know. So that's affecting my voice. <laughs> you need a little more time, bro. If you need, I maybe... I don't know what is it. Suddenly I see something running into my throat because my mouth was open, I was talking. <laughs> Never happened. Uh, anyway, I have to continue. If you need a, a little more time, like we can take no, no, it all right. to, yeah. It's all right. Uh, all right. Uh, let me uh, continue. All right. So I have given you the definition of ideas, concepts, and construct and proposition theory, all that here. I don't think I have explained it already. I don't have to. Now, then, uh, once you identify the construct, the variables, then we have to operationalize it. Instrumentation, very important. Huh? If you go to my YouTube channel, uh, recently, I think about a week before, I have uh, uploaded uh, a video on instrumentation. Please uh, go through to understand more. So a construct, which is basically a variable, we have to have operational definition. Our own definition, our own research definition, a, a co construct, a concept may have many different definitions. Different academic may provide different definition. But then I will have to accept one. Uh, the way I measure the construct in my research, that is operation definition of the term. Huh? Then we find dimension and we have few items to measure that. 
these are the types of theory there. I don't think uh, I would be explaining uh, the, uh, on it, okay, uh, today, because I don't have really uh, much time. I see many questions there uh, on the chat box. Uh, many of you are there. <laughs> so I would rather handle uh, questions, okay? I leave it this. I leave this to you for your own reading. <clears throat> Function of TF, uh, theoretical framework. Uh, basically, it provides a general framework of your study. It identifies the variable to be measured, right? In research problem, definition, remember, I, I propose a template whereby I put all the dependent and independent variable there. So you put it in the uh, framework to show, okay? What is a variable? Variable which something that differs, varies at different time. Act of purchase. When you purchase something, you don't buy exact amount every day or every time. And even the price of it, not always the same. Okay. So quantity is different, price is different, quality is different. So you buy the same thing from the same shop, the same shop, and yet the quality is different. The price is different. So that's what you call variable. Variable, there is something not a stick. Something not static, something varies from time to time. Okay, I've given some example here. I do not waste time there. Variables can be divided into three dichotomous, uh, the, the, the two uh, basically categorical, male, female, employed, unemployed. It could be discrete when you have more than two categories, or you can have continuous. Okay, this is important. This slide I have to spend uh, time, uh, then I'll proceed to some other slides. A uh, dependent variable is something, uh, your theme of your research, the main research problem is dependent variable, which is dependent on others, so it's dependent variable. Independent variable are the causes, the issues to the problem, causes that contribute to the problem, that's an independent variable. And in between, dependent and independent, whatever fall, we call it intervening variable. One you call moderating variable, other one you call it mediating variable. So I'm going to show you with examples and then I will explain more. <clears throat> And we do have also antecedents and outcome variable in recent research. Huh? We do have that also. Even though there are some people who would say antecedent and independent variable are the same. It's true most of the time, but there are cases whereby you may have antecedent variable before independent variable. An outcome variable is same as dependent variable, but there are cases whereby you can have outcome variable after dependent variable. I'm going to show you with example. <clears throat> okay, this is a simple... Uh, Theoretical framework, those of you are new with me, um, I, I do have to cover everyone. Huh? Those are very new and those are also experienced one. I have to cover everyone. So um, this is a, a topic, factors affecting internet abuse at workplace. So you can see internet abuse, uh, that is dependent variable and you have independent variable three. So we have basically three hypotheses. Hypothesis one, relationship between attitude, internet abuse and so on. Three hypotheses, okay? Now, can these three independent variables, I just like it and put it there? No. Must be supported by a theory. So these three uh, variables coming from TPB, theory of planned behavior. They must be supported by theory. That's what we call underpinning theories. The theory that underpins my study. So you have philosophical underpinning before. Positivism, post-positivism, constructivism or interpretivism. And now we have theoretical underpinning. We have theory that underpin, that support your study, okay? How a hypothesis should be written? I have given you three different ways of writing, all right? So you can obtain the slide and you can look at. There are many different ways of writing hypotheses. And I have written three hypotheses, three different ways for you to understand, okay? Now, uh, these are the synonyms of independent and dependent variable. Independent variable are also known as predictor, stimulus. It's also known as antecedent and sometimes also known as manipulated, right? And many times nowadays you see in paper, exogenous variable, right? Exogenous variable. And dependent variable are known as criterion variable, or predicted one consequence variable, or outcome variable, or indigenous variable. Okay, so those terms are very common. You can see it in papers. Now, what is antecedent variable? This is the framework you have earlier, right? I've shown you this before. But you can have even antecedent variable before. This is a real PhD thesis. Huh? So these are the antecedent to each independent variable. <laughs> so can I just pick the variable and put it there? No. Usefulness, ease of use, playfulness, these are all supported by theory. This is from TAM, Technology Acceptance Model. The next block also supported by theory. PR culture, supervisor culture, social exchange theory. So you can have even antecedents. And based on that, you may have variables also. Huh? So certain research, certain research, certain research. Not all research requests it. You may have antecedents. 
this is moderating variable. The one comes in between uh, dependent and independent. <clears throat> when moderating variable is introduced, basically either it increases the effect of independent to dependent or decreases the effect of independent to dependent. That's it. Either increases or decreases. So what happened, you know, when you have taken a research area and exhaustive research is done, you cannot find anything new in terms of independent variables. What do you do? Introduce a moderator. Showing that this variable may increase or decrease relationship between independent and dependent. That's moderator. Okay. Uh, for moderating variable, you have certain conditions that uh, got to be made. Huh? Baron and Kenny uh, has mentioned those. Huh? So these are the some one that we have to be uh, very careful of. Huh? So a moderating variable is typically introduced when there is an unexpected weak or inconsistent relationship between criterion and predicted variable. Predictor are independent variable, criterion are dependent variable. Okay. <clears throat> So when you find that thousands of research have been done, but it's still the relationship between independent and dependent is not that strong. So introduce another variable, moderating, to strengthen the effect of independent to dependent. Okay. <laughs> so that is moderating variable. So you have to fulfill that criteria. You cannot simply just put a variable and say, I want to test the moderating effect of this. Then that's not the way of doing it. You have to fulfill the prerequisites to introduce a moderating variable. Okay, so I do have uh, some other uh, one for you. Um, I'll leave it huh? now. Mediating variable. Mediating variable also kind of in intervening variable uh, in between independent and dependent, right? Uh, but here uh, you have to have certain rules also to follow. Huh? Uh, so basically it says uh, uh, the independent variable causes the mediator, which then causes the outcome. This is uh, Shadish and uh, Sony, huh? uh, but McKinnon has different ideas. Huh? He has given different criteria. He said, first of all, to be moderator, the independent to dependent, the effect must be very strong and proven. And then the independent to mediator also, the test is proven. And then only you introduce a mediator, the mediator leads to uh, the dependent variable. So this is how McKinnon proposes, I mean, Baron Kenny, right? Independent to mediator, to dependent, okay? And this is what McKinnon says, right? It says independent to dependent, independent to mediator, mediator to dependent, okay? So that's how it should be uh, taken. Uh, but earlier I saw this, uh, is proposing this, independent to mediator to dependent, all are acceptable, all are acceptable. Huh? Many people as uh, before when uh, McKinnon and uh, McKinnon at all proposed this, Independent to dependent and independent to mediate, mediating to dependent. When it was proposed, uh, basically there were a lot of issues there, a eh? lot of issues there. So now we do accept also this, right? It's acceptable now. And Kelly, brother and Kelly, can you please mute your microphone, please? Kelly. <coughs> and Kelly, brother, can you please mute your microphone? A problem <laughs> okay so this is one you can see mediating uh, variable i'm giving an example of it um, uh, this is another complicated model you can see uh, going to uh, moderating to depend it there are also way of doing it uh, uh, these are the few papers which you can read uh, but since we'll be sh sharing the slide with you i have given you about six papers i think yeah seven papers how to read to understand mediating and moderating variable, okay? <clears throat> now, certain research, you may have outcome variable. For example, like this, this one which you have. Remember? So this is your dependent variable and this is your independent variable. Now, there are some research where the dependent variable is search, it looks like hanging. So when people, you conclude a research saying internet is being abused. So somebody may come and ask you, so what? So what? Internet is able, so what? <laughs> so your research does not really conclude anything. You just say these are the factors that affect internet abuse, that contribute to internet abuse. So you can have outcome variable. You say, no, internet abuse, if internet is abused, it will contribute to some additional outcomes. For example, work efficiency and security tips. It may have some psychological outcomes. Uh, brother Adi uh, can, can you please mute your microphone? Mute your microphone. Okay. okay. Sorry. Please, please mute your microphone. Please, please mute. Uh, yes, I'm doing it. Uh, 
No, no, he's still come back. He's still not. No, no, he's still come back. He's still not. Okay, sorry. I'm muting it. Can you please mute it? It's not muted. Can you muted. please mute it? It's not muted. It's not muting. I'm muting it. Sorry. So it may have some psychological outcomes also. Huh? So this is outcome variable. So, so internet abuse, if internet is abuse, you will lead to some psychological outcomes. It may lead to some psychological outcomes. So that makes your research conclusive. If you don't have that, your research is hanging. <laughs> okay, your research is hanging. So, but please remember, please do not misunderstand me. I do not quote. Going to people and feeling, you know, Prof. Aminul has told me that. I, must have approved. I think the administrator should... Uh, should. Uh... Uh, thank you, thank you. I think the, the host is doing it. <laughs> yeah, just now did it. So, so internet abuse may lead to some organizational and psychological outcomes. So that could be even more contribution, you know. So I have even uh, given you how uh, an outcome hypothesis should be written. So you'll have the slide, you can go through that. So, so I've gone through already independent variable, dependent variable, moderating variable, mediating variable, antecedent variable, outcome variable. Huh? I've gone through all that. And finally, for economics and finance, economic uh, uh, accounting studies, you may have control variable. That's what you know as purification variable, uh, a variable that purifies the errors. You know, For example, like uh, you're producing a shampoo in the laboratory. How do you know that it's going to work under the sun? So you have to test it under the sun. So the sunlight become uh, the, 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 the control variable. Huh? So you are purifying whether it's going to be effective or not. So these are some examples given. And even uh, you can have models beside uh, uh, theory, right? Uh, as uh, uh, Mangred Egan, he said that theory has only uh, alternative of being right or wrong, but model has something additional. It is right and yet irrelevant. <laughs> So in economics, we study most of the time of finance, we do have modeling, right? So these are some, um, some modeling that I've just given you. That's how it is done. Okay. And uh, finally, the last two slides, uh, conceptual framework. Those of you who would like to do qualitative study, uh, definitely is going to be conceptual framework. You still remember the building blocks of a theory. You start with ideas, then concept, then construct, then proposition, then theory. So you start with ideas that need to concept. That's where you start and we end up with proposition or theory, okay? So you will have conceptual framework in that case. You may not have any theoretical support at all, okay? So these are some way of showing the conceptual framework, okay? Some examples are given. And I have also given clear cut distinction between theoretical framework and conceptual framework. This slide actually speaks a lot. Um, it may take even one hour for me to talk, <laughs> but I just leave it to you. Uh, in my YouTube channel, I do have uh, a video on this uh, explaining the differences between theoretical and conceptual framework. Uh, please watch that to understand more. Okay. So, thank you very much for your patient hearing. I'm sorry uh, for taking longer time, but I got no choice because we have decided to uh, cover two areas in one webinar <laughs> research problem and theoretical framework. Uh, that makes it uh, a quite difficult task for me, but uh, I have tried my best to make sure I can uh, explain both of these topics to you very well. And I know um, as I suffered during my PhD, everybody suffers with these two topics. As Panzamila told me, most of the students suffering with these two areas. So why don't you tackle these two areas first? So I don't know how um, uh, successful I was in explaining these two broader comprehensive topic. Uh, if I have contributed a bit uh, and explained uh, uh, a bit for you to understand this topic, I would be uh, very happy, all right? So now I pass the session to Pawan Jamila and uh, I'm ready to answer any question that you have. You can even ask me questions outside these two topics. I don't mind if the time allows. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Professor Aminul Islam, Thank you, Thank you, for the very valuable sharing. We are very really grateful to you. Thank you, Prof, for sharing us up. Okay. And there are a number of questions in the chat box. Uh, uh, I, I will read them for you in order of the receipt. 
Prof. But some of you, you have already answered. The first one is what is the main difference in terms of a diagram between theoretical framework and conceptual framework? Is it possible to know how, how to differentiate them in diagrams? Uh, definitely, because theoretical framework uh, is supported by a theory and you have all variables there. Independent variable, dependent variable, mediating variable, moderating, whatnot. These all are there. So clear cut demarcation line is there. A theoretical framework is supported by theory, underpinning theory and supporting theory. See, it is supported by one theory, you call it underpinning theory. If you have more than one theory to support your framework, the dominant theory would be underpinning theory, and the other theory becomes supporting theories. Okay, so a theoretical framework is guided, supported by theories. Conceptual framework is not supported by a theory. Is supported by the concept. You start the research with ideas, then you proceed to concept. Concept something that can be visualized, but it is not proved yet. So from some concept, you proceed to construct something measurable. So through your research, you show how can you measure the concept, and then you propose some propositions to be proved. That's where most of you will end up your PhD thesis. But some of you brilliant, some of you are very intelligent, brilliant. You may end up with a the theory. So you test the proposition and you prove it, then it becomes a theory. You may end up like that. So there is a clear cut demarcation line. There is no problem on that. Huh? So theoretical framework supporting my theory, guided by theory, whereby a conceptual framework is guided by a concept. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor. A very clear, direct answer. Okay. The second question uh, What is the link between research questions and research problems? Wow, there's a, there's a direct link. There must be a clear cut link. Research problem is translated into research questions. See, for example, the example I have given you, I'm not feeling healthy. Why I'm not feeling healthy? Because I got body ache. I got runny nose. I got diarrhea. Those are the issues. So the research question is, how does the diarrhea affect my health? How does the cough affecting my health? Those are the research questions. You see? So once you identify the issues and problem, you relate the issues with the problem that become research questions. So your research problem must be, must be translated into research, few research questions. All right. And the third question is, are we to specify the topic first before identifying the research problem? I thought the problem should be identified first and then the topic. Please explain. How can you identify the research problem before knowing the topic? If I want to do research in marketing, okay, now my research is about marketing. So before that, if I know the problem is here, like, you know, the, 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 the sales drop or problem with marketing efforts and all that, possible, you know the problem and from there, uh, uh, you know, you continue uh, the topic. Uh, but I would rather prefer to start with the general topic first. Keep in mind what you want to do, what interests you, uh, what do you see become a concern, a trouble, a problem uh, uh, in, the, in the society and all that? So taking that general view, from there you identify, you know, a uh, 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 problem, a specific problem, then you continue. So area of research first, then only we identify problem, not research problem first, then you go to areas, okay? But it could be either way, because say, for example, a research problem is clearly identified even before you do the research. So you start with the research problem, then you finalize your topic. Possible, possible. Thank you. And the next one is, if a new idea strikes in my head that might be useful in solving an existing problem that I don't find any literature on this issue, in that case, how can I start? Is there any practice on doing research without any theory and literature uh, review? Yes, we. I have explained that, right? Uh, I said, Qualitative study start from zero. So people undertake qualitative study because there is no theories to explain the problem they have. Okay, so if you cannot find enough literature, enough uh, supporting theories, uh, then you have to undergo inductive research, inductive approach. Okay, you have to go for constructivism or interpretivism, qualitative study. Definitely you can. So you start with ideas. You see, a qualitative study or, or inductive research, you start with ideas, then you go to concept. From there, we develop construct, then you propose propositions, then we come out with the theory. So you start from zero. That's qualitative study. Definitely, you can do it, but very challenging. Uh, I'm a quantitative person. 
but I do examine a few qualitative studies and I found it's really challenging. Uh, for me, I do not feel I'm fit to do a qualitative study <laughs> because I have not done any research yet. But to me, qualitative study is very challenging compared to quantitative one. Because quantitative, I have a theory to guide me. <laughs> but qualitative, I don't have it. 